2025 is to be a major year for space enthusiasts, with the largest digital camera ever constructed being turned on and aimed at the stars. A new observatory has been built in Chile to capture ultra-high definition images of the night sky and share the data with scientists and space lovers around the world. And joining me now is Professor Catherine Haymans, who's Astronomer Royal for Scotland. Uh, Professor, very good to talk to you today. Um, so it's going to be a, a great year for looking at the stars. Tell us more about this uh, massive camera and how it's going to be working. Oh, thanks. Good morning, Jane. Yeah, it is going to be a really big year for UK astronomy, thanks to the Vera Rubin Observatory. And you're right, we have the biggest digital camera in the world. It has two Guinness World Records uh, because it's the largest camera with the largest lens. Um, to give you an idea of the size of this camera, it's the size of a small car. And the lens on the camera, so... Um, the lens, if you look on the back of your smartphone, you see there's a little sort of round circle on it. That's the lens on your smartphone. The lens on this camera is the height of an average woman. <laughs> this is absolutely huge. Now, to view a single image from our camera, you're going to need 400 ultra high definition, high resolution televisions to see just one of these images. And we're gonna be taking a thousand of these images every night. And we're super excited because this week, the camera is being fitted with this brand new telescope, the Vera Rubin Observatory in, the, in Chile. It's gonna take a couple of months to make sure it's all aligned and perfectly, but Easter summer, we're gonna see the first images um, coming out from this amazing new facility where the UK plays a real major role. And what images are we expecting to see that we haven't already seen? Yeah, so what's really new about this facility is that we are going to be making a movie of the universe. So um, each night we're going to be taking images across the night sky, the whole night sky, and then we go back again three days later and take another image and another image and another image. Over 10 years, we're going to be building up 800 images of each tiny patch of sky, which we can then string together in a time-lapse movie. Now, what we're looking for is things that change in our universe. It could be asteroids or comets moving in our solar system, pulsating stars within our own Milky Way galaxy. Um, we're also keen to see exploding supernova stars in distant galaxies and changes in black holes. We're going to be issuing no, 10 million alerts every single night and each one indicates a change that has happened in the universe overnight, um, which we're super excited about. And this data is going to be shared um, across the globe. So we're hoping that lots of citizen scientists will get involved too to see what's changing out there in our universe. So this is the fact is that this is essentially real-time data on the, on the movements of, of stars that we are going to be able to get, anyone's going to be able to access and do their own research into it, I suppose. Yep, if they want to. I mean, 10 million alerts a night is a lot <laughs> to get through. And um, one of the things that we're really proud of here in the UK is that we are processing a quarter of this data. We are one of the major international partners in this big US project because there's just so much data to look at. The universe is absolutely huge. The other great thing that we're looking at is we are building up all of these images of, over time to create the deepest wide field view of the universe. And that's going to allow us to test out different theories about what is the dark matter that's out there, the strong gravitational force in our universe. What is this mysterious dark energy that appears to be causing the expansion of our universe to get faster and faster each and every day? And so there's so much different um, astronomy we can learn about through this fantastic new observatory um, that has been named after one of my heroes, um, Vera Rubin, who was uh, the first astronomer to really make us understand that dark matter is out there. And, and you mentioned the, the, the observatory itself, it's in Chile. Why, why is Chile such a good place to be looking upwards? And, and also why, I mean, is that why that it, this is just going to be looking at the Southern Hemisphere? Yes, so uh, it would be great to have a, an observatory in the Northern Hemisphere as well, but yes, this is in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, so when we take these sort of data, uh, we obviously uh, trouble by clouds. Uh, I'm, I'm up in Scotland and uh, I've got glorious sunshine right now, but often we're, we're shaking our fists at the clouds here. So um, in the Andes mountain range where the uh, Vera Rubin Observatory is, um, it's very dry. It's also incredibly dark because it's far away from um, human population that, that cause light pollution in our sky. So incredibly dark, incredibly dry, perfect observing conditions to be able to take this 
awesome 10 year project of just mapping the night sky over and over again to create this fabulous movie. And we don't know what we're going to see. This is the first time we've ever made this sort of experiment by looking at the universe over and over and over again. So who knows what we're going to discover um, when we get this camera switched on and perfectly aligned with our telescope. So definitely watch this space because this is a fantastic new instrument. I'm super excited about it, Jane, as you can probably tell. <laughs> well, yeah, you might be able to, you might be able to tell. Uh, the, the US, though, in terms of funding, you, you mentioned that the UK is, is processing a, a large amount of the data. Yeah. The funding for it from the US, this came because they're concerned about asteroids, aren't they? I mean, the, yeah. the fact that it's only mapping half the globe, I mean, what if, what if the astronauts, asteroids are coming from the north? Well, so um, we do see different parts of the sky. So um, so a lot of the sky is going to be covered. So, yeah, so 66 million years ago, um, people will be familiar with the, the dinosaurs that used to roam around on planet Earth. And there was a, a, a giant asteroid that, that came and obliterated uh, the dinosaurs, sadly. Now, um, hopefully, uh, there's not anything like that coming towards us anytime soon. But what we'll be able to do with this fantastic new gigantic camera is to be able to map out all of the asteroids and and comets in our solar system just in case there is one heading towards us. In our very first year, we're going to detect more asteroids than have ever been detected by any other set of telescopes in, in the history of, of observations. And because we can map how they're moving over time, we get a very accurate projectile of where they're going in our solar system. So on the very small off chance that there is one coming towards us, I guess then we mobilise Bruce Willis. I, I don't know, Jane, what we do then, <laughs> but at least we know about it and we can start thinking about what we would do if, if it really is coming towards us. Deploy Bruce Willis, uh, <laughs> Professor <laughs> Catherine Haymans, Astronomer Royal for Scotland. Uh, very good to talk to you and to share your enthusiasm for what's happening in Chile. Thank you. Thanks, Jane.